My Victory family, it is Songs of Summer, week five. We are so pumped that you're joining us today. We are in for an awesome Sunday. My goodness, like uh, Songs of Summer, guys, if you're joining us for the first time, this is a series where we're releasing one song every week that was been written from in-house, and Pastor Kelly is preaching each song. And so today is song number five, which is entitled Blank and Blank. You're just going to leave them hanging there? Leave you hanging. You got to stay there. <laughs> hey, guys. If you guys are joining us for the first time, we would love to connect with you. Um, Anthony and Carson are in the chat. So if it is your first time, just give a little hands up emoji and we'll connect with you or reach out to Anthony and Carson and they'll get you all you need to know to be involved in the online community, not just on Sundays, but all throughout the week. We have a Facebook group that you can join for the online campus and we would love to connect with you. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Looking back into the week, Thursday night we had built the team night. Anthony took the team through uh, communications training. Like, guys, we're trying mm -hmm. to, we are building this online campus team. We want to reach as many people as possible. I see some people here. We have Ann Santos and Babul. Mm -hmm. I hope I pronounced that right. So glad you guys are joining us today. Guys, this online campus is a way that we can do church wherever. Mm -hmm. No walls no borders guys let's build this team and uh, if you're watching the service right now we would love you guys to share it yeah and we just recently added a service time for the philippines because yes. we had such a draw of people that were interested in watching it there and tess and sometimes you see tess in the comments she's the one that kind of hosts that service and yeah it's been super fun to That's be able right. to reach people all across the world with the online and joining the group all throughout the week and being a part of connect groups and prayer nights and all those things. Yeah, it doesn't stop on Sundays. Yeah, that Philippine time, guys, is Wednesday mm -hmm. at 7 p.m. in the Philippines. It is 5 a.m. here, mm -hmm. where we are in Lethbridge, Alberta. So providing a service, make sure that if you know anybody in that area, guys, get them to that service. This series is, I just spoke with somebody after this last service. The series is changing their life. Mm -hmm. And after everything that everybody went through through COVID and the questioning God and whether he's there or not, whether he's real, Guys, this message today as well is specifically so focused on answering that. So Yeah, and just like what Tim was saying, if you know somebody who needs to hear this message today, definitely this is the point where we want you to share. We know that you have friends and family who need to hear just what Tim was saying. People are questioning. People have um, things that they've been carrying over from COVID that I think has been eating away at us yeah. or just different things that we're wrestling through or struggling with in our faith. And today's message is for them. So definitely share it with them. Send them a message yep. or invite them to the stream. Just, yeah, just share. I have to <laughs> laugh a little bit because I have hope here. She's back for service number two. Number two. Debbie, <laughs> back for service number two. <laughs> I don't know what crew. happened. Yeah, it was a good crew. I don't know what happened last service. We had fire alarms going off. We did, yeah. Like, <laughs> it was insane. You guys were along for the journey. Lots of distractions, <laughs> but man, you guys were there right along with us. Debbie says, hey, yeah. T and J. If there's any doubt that it's live. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, it's live. Very yeah. live indeed. Yeah. That being said, guys, we have also have a kids experience. If you are at home, you're not able to make it to one of our physical locations. I want you to go to family.myvictory.ca. There is a specific service catered for your kids that our team has made, and uh, they're really going to enjoy it. So it's not just adults that get to get on, yeah. on church on Sunday. It is also the children. Yep, so awesome. We're about to go into a time of worship here right away. Absolutely, guys. This is our time mm -hmm. where we defeat discouragement. So whatever your week has looked like in the past seven days since we were at church last, I yep. want you guys to join us, whether you're physical, physically local or whether you're distant. I want you to stand wherever you are, whether you're driving. Turn the volume up. We've got a couple of songs here. I was listening to the band warm up. Sound amazing. Yeah. So, so privileged to have these, this amazing group of people here. But you guys are in for a real treat today. So without further ado, we are. would you stand up? Would you join us as we join with all of our churches across all of our campuses as we lift God higher than our circumstance? Victory Church. Yeah, here we go. There's the idea. 
Give it up, man. We got a great service for you guys today. Super cool elements out in the patio after, too. We got food, we got bubbly, we got squirt guns. Uh, it's gonna be a blast. Uh, my name's Ralph, get to serve as campus pastor here. I'm just giving a little bit of a rundown besides the video. You guys can stand with us, for one, because we're gonna sing a little bit before Pastor Kelly comes. More of Songs of Summer. You're gonna love the song that's released today, too. Super powerful. We've got a family dedicating a baby today. Give it up for them. And that's not all, that's not all. If you've got little ones, babies to grade five, you can take them through these doors down the hall, get them checked in. It's a whole uh, Indiana Jones theme back there. The team is set. I was gonna say Jurassic Park, but that's really not good for little kids. Bunch of dinosaurs, so it's Indiana Jones. <laughs> all right, are you guys ready to sing? All right, let's take it up. Words are on the screen.
and your love is who you are. It's a grace I could never add to be somebody you still want. But somehow, you love me as you find me. Amen. Isn't our God good? God doesn't demand or expect perfection. We don't have to be all perfect before we get loved and accepted by Him. Thank God for that, huh? Man. Religion demands that we have to have it all together before we get accepted. And then Jesus came and changed all that. And proved over and over and over and over and over again that he loves us as he finds us. He proved that when he invited himself over to Zacchaeus' house. He proved that when he interacted with the adulterous woman. The religion demanded that she be killed for her sins. Jesus didn't even rebuke, just offered forgiveness, acceptance. Loved her as he found her. He proved that again when he called Matthew a tax collector. He's a thief and a liar and despicable. He didn't ask Matthew to change and then said, follow me. He just said, follow me. Let's have relationship first. Man, over and over and over again. And, and it's so confused the religious people that they killed him for it. Because they're like, it's... That kind of love from God, that's too good to be true. Jesus like, I know, but it's true anyway. Amen? So good. God is so good. You may be seated. I'm going to invite the, the freezing clan to come up. We're going we're gonna, to uh, dedicate Dominic right now, which is so awesome. Give them a big hand. Hey, buddy. Yeah, I got smiles. I usually get cries and, oh, yeah, it's all good. Awesome. This is, this is always so much fun to do. And we do, we do baby dedication. And the reason why we do it, because it's kind of set a precedent in the Bible. The Bible says this in Deuteronomy 6. It says, And these words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your sons, and talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. So that's, that's a commandment of God that we should lovingly and diligently raise up our children in relationship with our amazing God, their creator. And in obedience to this command, these parents are bringing Dominic today, and, and this, we do dedication because the precedent was set by, in, by Hannah in 1 Samuel 1 verse 27. And she said this, she said, I prayed for this boy and the Lord has given me my petition, which I asked of him. So I have also dedicated him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he is dedicated to God. Jesus was dedicated in the same way and presented by Joseph and Mary. And you can find that in Luke chapter 2, verse 22. And so it's the desire of his parents to present Dominic to the Lord today as a pledge, as an answer to prayer, and with a purpose to see him grow up to be a powerful man of God. And the purpose of the ceremony is really found in you guys <laughs> as, as the parents to pledge yourselves to obey the command of, of God. And when he said through Paul in Ephesians 6, fathers do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And so I'm going to, if your intention to dedicate Dominic today as described previously, please answer we do to the following covenant. Firstly, do you here today recognize Dominic as a gift from God and give God the thanks that is due this gift? Do you here today dedicate him to the Lord? And do you here today pledge as parents that you'll bring him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? And do you here today promise to give him every benefit of home, of school, and of church? And you hear this day, ask God's blessing on his life to guard and direct him through all his years. Amen. 
God, creator of all life, we thank you now for Dominic and has been dedicated unto you. And we ask that you would guard and direct his life and the lives of his parents as you've put them in the care, in their care. We pray that your mercy would be new every morning as your word says in, in the family's life in Jesus' name. Give them the wisdom to know what's right and the courage to do what's right no matter what. what. May they grow in stature and strength and in favor with you and with men. We ask a blessing on the entire family and all health and happiness, finances and unity. Give them the strength to carry out the vows that they've made before you today in Jesus' name. And we believe that as a church, we're a family. That's what God called us, the family of God. So we believe it takes a village to raise a child and as a family. So if we stand with these parents, would you just, the congregation, just stand? I'm going to pray just a blessing over him. Lord, we thank you so much for Dominic. And God, I pray, Lord, that you, you would bless his life and he would increase daily in favor with you and with man. We thank you for the anointing that's on his life. We call it out in Jesus' name. And may the gifts that's in him be stirred by your Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Do I get a high five? No? Okay. That's <laughs> Give them a big hand. It's awesome. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Oh, and you guys are attending Lloyd campus now? Wow. That's a little ways to come. That's awesome. Give, 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 give them a big hand. That's so cool. That's awesome. Man, so, yeah, I just was in Lloyd Friday. Not on purpose. I'm, I'm going to go there on purpose. Yeah, you guys can have a seat. I'm going to go there on purpose soon. I was just there because we're uh, going to a conference. How, about, how cool is that? We get to go to a conference in Seattle this week, um, which is, which is uh, a little bit of a process to get to. So we had to go to Lloyd because we, Joylin and I, were vacationing last week in northern Saskatchewan. I know everybody wants to go there for vacation, but it really, everyone asked, like, Saskatchewan, why'd you go there? Because there's nothing, you guys all took it up, everything around here. No, just kidding. But, it, like, we can't go, you know, so we found, it, in northern Saskatchewan, it's gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful. And, and we, anyway, so we had to get a COVID test before we could cross the border, so the only, and you had to do it in Alberta, so we had to kind of detour into Lloyd Minster and, and got, got it there and waved at our campus there and then drove home. And you have to do the test there and then we have to do it again in Seattle one where we're there and then we fly home on Thursday and then we have to do it again next weekend here to do that again just to prove that man, that's more tests than... It's 150 bucks a test per person, which is that's a lot for a Q-tip to go down the throat. Just, But they're going to pay for that lottery one way or another. Just saying. Anyway. <laughs> Just kidding. We didn't come for all that. Anyway, welcome to My Victory Church. We're excited that you're here. We're excited to get into more of Songs of Summer. Man, if you're visiting us for the first time, special welcome to you. We have a saying around here, no perfect people. We mean it. Like, we just sang a song where our God is, allows and accepts and welcomes no perfect people. And we just want to exemplify Him, not religion, which sets a standard. We're all a bunch of imperfect people, and we just are willing to admit it and say, yeah, we're messed up. We, we got problems and struggles like everybody else. And you're going to see that in the message today. Um, and we are, we, but we're just, so whatever stage of relationship, all of us, imperfect, seeking relationship with an amazing, gracious, kind, good God. And whatever stage of relationship you're on, whether you're just exploring, just beginning, been in your whole life, you're welcome here. And we're so glad you came. I know you're seated already, but as the video is going to come up on the side screens, why don't you turn around and say hello to somebody and welcome them here. I couldn't see God in my situation at all. He says he's in control, but I had no idea what his plan was. 
I had to change the way that I saw things. everyone. Welcome again to My Victory Church. Welcome to all of you that are joining us online, wherever you guys are around the world. <laughs> Special welcome to all of you see on here. We got uh, Hope's on there. Carson's on there, of course. Jen's on there. Deb's on there. Uh, we have uh, George is on there. Peggy's on there. Deborah's on there. Anthony's on there. Babul's on there. We've got Anne on there. Welcome to all of you guys that are on there. Give them again a big hand. Welcome to all of our campuses. Those joining us in Tabor, Lethbridge, Claire's Home, Okotoks, Lloyd Minster, welcome to all of you, and welcome to part five of our, hey, Bren's on there, hey, Bren, good to see you, um, and we, welcome to part five of our series, Songs of Summer, and this, this summer, we just, we're so excited that we get to be in the same room together, get to see your full faces. That's beautiful. We get to hang out. We get to have uh, food together and celebrate. We're just wanting to have as much fun as we possibly can. And Songs of Summer is based on, throughout the COVID season, our music team got together and we did a writing retreat and just said, we're going to write some songs that, that are for this house, from this house. Prophetic songs, and I believe God speaks prophetically through worship in many ways, and we wanted to, to, to write songs that we felt like God was speaking to our church in this season. As, as these songs are being written, I, I'm, I noticed a different level of depth in them this time that I hadn't seen, and just in multiple ways, and I thought, we got to preach on this stuff too, because these songs aren't just, a, you know, from the, the few lyricists that we have that, that put them all together, and the musicians that put them all together. These songs are really I think this is voicing what many of us have been feeling and going through. And I don't know if you have had that, if you've been here and, and heard some of these songs and some of these messages, but I'm hearing from so many of you that are saying, that one is like just for me. And, and we're not creeping you out and stalking you and, and writing lyrics that are going about your life, but we're saying, I felt, just as we did that, I felt like these songs are more than just for a few. This is something that is voicing Something that all of us have been feeling. And what happens when you prophetically hear stuff, this is how God works. When you hear somebody else voice exactly what you're feeling, or you hear me preach a message, and you're going, like, were you following me this week? No. Like, how did you know? You're speaking right to me. What's going on? I, and I'm amazed every single time because somebody's like, did, did you prepare that, like, this week for me? And I'm amazed every single time, just as you are, because that's how Holy Spirit works. He cares so much for you and everything you're going through that he finds ways to speak confirmation of something. And when somebody else voices it, this is what happens to me. When I hear somebody else voice something that I've been wrestling with or thinking through and not sure if this is really God or this is something going on. And then somebody voices through a message or through a song that's exactly, puts words to exactly what I've been feeling, then I feel just a that much more confident going, that is God. That's not just last night's pizza. <laughs> that's not just my own crazy mind, which can drift off in all different places all the time. That is God really doing something. And that's what we felt like in this series. We wanted to give you something and share something with you that is, that is going to confirm what God is speaking to you. Now, I, this is something fascinating. I didn't realize this until this week, and we prepared this whole series um, months ago. But as I was just meditating on things this week, I just noticed, and we didn't really, we, we talked multiple times about what order to put these messages in and the songs in and how we can do it. We talked like, which, how do we do that? And we went back and forth. In fact, we recently changed the, the ending order a little bit and, and just how things all work out. But this is what's this was fascinating. This week I had this revelation that the songs of July, the ones that we have just gone through, and including a, a little bit of today's, is, is kind of, today's kind of the halfway point, the breaking point, the turning point. But the songs that we have gone through were almost like a lament type songs of what the year and a half that we just all been through. And they're just kind of reflecting of stuff that we've wrestled and we've been through. And without like being smart enough to plan it this way, 
the last four songs that we're going to get to, today's the turning point, the last ones that we, we get to on here are going to be a shift to not just talking about what we've been through, but a real shift into where we're going and what we're going to. And, and you guys are going to be a little bit, I think, just a little bit surprised as to some of the music that's coming because it sounds quite different and we're about to get our praise on. Is that okay? Okay, and we're going to, we're going to break something spiritually over this house, over your house, over your hearts. We're gonna, and we're going to launch, this is what we're going we're gonna to launch into the next season with confidence that God is leading and dri- guiding and directing and all the rest. We're going to launch and, and, and be able to step with confidence into what is next. And what is next is so exciting. I cannot wait. The next two months of this church, I'm telling you, this is so exciting. October 1st, mark it down. And I've had many of you message me, Pastor Kelly, did you know that that's a Friday? Yes. (laughs) Fully aware. It's a Friday. Friday, October 1st, we are going to have a party of parties on the property here. And we're we're inviting all of our campuses, all of you online. If you can make it here October 1st, come. I know it's a little hard for you, Tess, in the Philippines. Hey, come. If there's a way. Well, well, we'd love to have you. All right, but we, we, uh, you know, we, we are going to ha- invite everybody here. We're going to have a party, and it's going to be basically a relaunch, kind of a replant of our entire church. And it's going to be a celebration that we're going to enjoy one another, we're going to relaunch, rebrand, all the rest of it, and plus we're going to have a concert, all these kind of things, it's just going to, it's just going to be a party, and we're going to have campers on, on site for anybody who wants to come and bring campers, and you can camp on site, hotels in the nearby, all the right, whatever you, whatever you're into, we're going to hang out Friday, and probably it's going to drag in into Saturday a little bit, and then Sunday back at our campuses, we're going to, we're going to launch, and it's going to be basically the planting, the replanting of something what God has next. Yeah, it's going to be good. All right, today's song is entitled Grit and Grace. And yeah, it sounds just like it sounds, just, just to let you know, which is not country, just saying. In case you were thinking that would not be permitted in any... Sorry, Cindy. Yeah. Not going to happen. Um, <laughs> but every single one of these messages, I begin with a question. And today's question, before you just quickly answer and give the pat Sunday school answer, and what I mean by Sunday school answer is those of us who grew up in the era of Sunday school. Anybody remember Sunday school in church? Yeah, in the era of Sunday school where we had Sunday school before church. Anybody remember that? Yeah. Um, and then we had Wednesday service, and we had Sunday night services, and we had, like, we, had, we were at church all the time. Um, but but it, in the Sunday school answer is basically what we expect everyone else to expect. And we're good at that as Christians and religious people sometimes, aren't we? We're good at giving the answer we expect everybody else wants to hear. But we lie. Right? Everyone's like, am I allowed to say that? <laughs> if you're not, you're lying. You're in church. Come on. Just kidding. But I want, before you give the Pat Sunday School answer here, I want you to really think through this answer because this one, this, here's the question. Have you ever doubted your faith? Have you ever asked, is God really real? And is what I believe actually true? And before you expect, see, this is, this is the Sunday school answer. Before, we, we, we have a hard time a lot of times admitting we got doubts. But I'm here to say, I'm a pastor. I got doubts frequently. Questions. I, I, I don't know. Like, I, like, recently, like, God, is this all real? Like, like. What's, yeah, am I being punked? What's going, like, is this real? 
And then we feel this twinge of like, I, well, I can't say that out loud. I certainly can't say that to him. I, can't, I definitely can't talk to my pastor about it or talk to, to other Christians about it. <laughs> like, if I do that, I mean, they're just going to give me the same answer. Like, of course, if we don't like, just believe. Have faith. Come on. That's what faith is. Just believe. And we feel, I don't know, a twinge of guilt, or maybe I'm just talking about me, of even having those questions. And so we go around with unanswered questions and we don't ever voice it because we think we're going to get criticized by others and most of all, he's not going to like us or something's going to, I don't know. So I, I want to address that. Is, is, is it okay to question? And before we, you know, get, before we get uncomfortable and all the rest of it too late, um, some of you are having those questions right now and going, oh no. Maybe you're not saying, is God real? Maybe that's not your question. Maybe you're saying, like, why God? Why don't you answer prayer all the time the way I want it to be answered in the timely fashion I want it to be answered? Like, why do you do things and allow things? And God, what, like, is this real? Before we feel guilty about that, I want you to know that one of the most successful, I don't know, admirable Bible characters out there, his name John the Baptist, had some serious doubts. We're first introduced to John the Baptist. He's Jesus' cousin. And he was the one that went out into the wilderness and was weird. He dressed in camel's hair and smelled gross, I'm sure. Looked gross. Like, was, was not a sight to behold. But he, he would go out there and he'd preach repentance. And he, and he was basically saying, you know, repent from your religious ways and come into relationship with God in the real way and get baptized. And, and people were falling by the droves and walking away from the Pharisees, by the way, in order to do this and kind of threatening the whole, you know, religious apple cart, like turning it over. And, and we see Jesus going out himself and getting baptized. In Matthew chapter 3, it says this. John said this as he's preaching. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you, talking about Jesus, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Verse 13, a couple of verses later, says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan, to, which is not a beautiful river. If anyone's been there, it's it's." Kind of is gross, but it's all good. Jesus came to the Jordan to be baptized by John. Think about that for a second. God in a bod, the Messiah, God Himself, asks a mere mortal to baptize Him. Like, just first of all, that should say what kind of man John is in the stature of this. Like, a sinful man baptizing the sinless Messiah. It's just in, in and of itself that to say like, okay, that breaks all the barriers. Like that's, some, that's something different. So with John realizing this, but John tries to deter Jesus saying, no, 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 no. He says, I need to be baptized by you. John gets it. And he says, you come to me? So what happens? Jesus convinces John to baptize Jesus. And he baptized Jesus. And immediately afterwards, the skies open up and God's audible voice speaks and says, this is my son. John's witnessing all of this. Everyone around there is witnessing all this. A dove flies down, all the rest of it. This is spectacular. And you're thinking, if there's anybody ever in all the Bible besides Jesus that shouldn't have any doubts, it's a guy who baptizes and believes that his cousin is the Messiah, how much faith would it take for you to believe that your cousin is God? John believes that his cousin is the Messiah and unworthy and baptizes him, and he hears the audible voice from heaven. And yet, a number of chapters later, we pick it up in, in Matthew chapter 11. Look at this, verse 2. It says this When John heard in prison, by this time, um, John has upset the religious apple cart so much so that Herod goes to try to keep the peace with the religious people who he's trying, he's a people pleaser, and his wife who hated John because John would call out their sinful marriage and all the rest. And so he arrests John. So John is in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, okay, of, of Christ, 
And he sent his disciples, John's disciples, to ask him, ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? <laughs> wait, 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 what? This is after John has seen the skies part and God's audible voice speak. This is after he says, I'm not worthy to baptize you. You're the one. This is after. After. And he's like, are you really the one? And the question, the question that we need to, that I have, that I really want to get to is, how did Jesus respond to this questions? Did he roll his eyes? Did he take a deep breath? Did he respond in anger? Because his response is important because it's an indication of how he was going to respond or how he is going to respond to my questions, to my doubts, too. Because if there's anybody who has no excuse to have questions, it'd be John. So Jesus' response is going to be all telling. So here's what Jesus does. Look at how he responds. Jesus replied, go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. Blessed is the man who does not fall away on account of me. Watch, look at this. No anger, no sigh that we can tell, just a straight response of what was being accomplished as evidence of God's kingdom come. Because remember, at this point, Jesus says he announced his ministry right after getting baptized by John and saying the kingdom of God has come. So evidence of the kingdom of God coming, Jesus says the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Then Jesus says, Blesses anyone who does not stumble on account of me. And I first, I've read this for years as this is kind of Jesus' gentle, slight little slap. Like, John, blessed is anyone, not you, because you're questioning me, who does not stumble. But if you want to look at what this originally translated, what this originally says, the word blessed means happy, fortunate, to be envied. Okay, so in other words, Jesus say, is saying it's enviable if anyone doesn't at some point in their life get offended by me. In other words, interesting statement. It's almost like Jesus is saying, yo, it's enviable if someone's not going to get offended by me in some time. Let me just put this in perspective. Our relationship with God is a relationship. So in perspective, is there anybody in here, you don't have to answer this, and, uh, please don't answer this out loud, but just, uh, just let me ask the question. Is there anybody in here who's been married longer than three months who has not at some point in their marriage been offended by their spouse? <laughs> yeah, no, you don't have to be married, no. Anybody here who has children that are older then six months, never been offended with your children. Got really quiet in here online, help me out. <laughs> the reality is those that we love the most, at some point, it'd be enviable to have a marriage unoffendable. Wouldn't that be enviable? That'd be, that'd be like, that'd be like, oh my goodness. Like, like that, how, can you imagine that? Uh, no. That's what Jesus is saying. We're in relationship, and if, we, if you at some point aren't going to get offended with me, <laughs> like we, you're to be envied. Is that what really what he meant, or is this just Kelly's weird translation? Look at his watch. I think it's what he really meant, because look what he says next. As the, John's disciples were leaving, Jesus began to speak to the crowd about John, just as. It doesn't say after they left, it says as they were leaving. In other words, Jesus kind of raises his voice a little bit and he's like, let me tell you about John. And all of a sudden the disciples are like, woo. 
we should probably listen to this. Because Jesus has been nice so far, but here it comes. And we're going to tell John all about how he's in trouble for asking that question. And I'm probably thinking John's disciples are like, really? We were there, John, when we saw the heavens open up. You're asking, you want us to go ask this question? You want us to ask this question? And then they see John, Jesus' response, and they're like, they're like, okay. And then they're leaving, and they hear Jesus, let me tell you about John. And they're like, whoa, here it comes. And you're, they're expecting Jesus to say, like, He's my cousin. How dare you? I was there. Heavens opened up. God, my father spoke. Like, how could he have questions? That would be what would be expected. But look at what Jesus says. Jesus said, what you got into the wilderness to see? A reed swayed by the wind? If not, did you, what did you go out to see? A man dressed in fine clothes? Not John. That's not the guy. Camel's hair, Gross. No, those who wear fine clothes are in king's palaces. Then what did you go out to see, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Wait, just wait, wait. What did Jesus say? John comes questioning whether Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus doesn't get defensive of himself Jesus starts to defend John. And not only defend him and goes, hey, let me tell you about this John. You remember the prophet Isaiah who said that there's going to be one, a messenger, that's what he quoted, or the prophet Malachi who said of, of the one preparing the way, 400 years ago they talked about a man who would come prepare the way. They were talking about John. In other words, they're, they're saying... Like, John is somebody who God foretold hundreds of years before arriving. So he is a little bit different. A little bit special. And Jesus says, in case you weren't aware, he was a prophet, but he was more than a prophet. He was one prophesied by the prophets. This is John. And Jesus' response to defend John is an indication of how he's going to respond to your questions. Can you imagine? You question God. God, like, what's wrong with you? Like, what are you doing? Like, are you even real? I don't know what I'm talking to. Like, I don't know. And you question God, and he's, he's not going to get defensive going, I'm here, I'm God. He's not going to be, the, yeah, he's not going to be that parent that's like, I'm God, because I said so. Can you imagine his response to your questions, your doubts is to defend you and your calling? In other words, listen, I always pictured God as the judge and chief executioner when I messed up. When in actuality, Jesus is actually the defense attorney. defending you, and not only defense attorney, you know how he defends us? He says to the accuser, you can't touch him or her. She's mine. He's mine. And by the way, what they deserve, put it on me. Wow. Jesus goes on. He says this, truly I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Jesus didn't say this when John baptized him. Jesus didn't say this after hearing one of John's sermons. Jesus said this after John questions. Jesus wasn't offended by the question at all. Instead, he gives John the highest praise in the midst of his greatest doubts and questions. So the question I have is, why do we then feel ashamed when we have doubts and questions ourselves? The truth is, we should absolutely question, absolutely challenge 
everything. After all, truth is truth. And if it's not, then it should be threatened. But if truth is truth, truth is not going to get a threatened. It's truth. Jesus didn't get defensive because truth wasn't threatened. His identity wasn't threatened. He turns around and knows John's identity is the one that's being threatened. And he starts defending John as his disciples were there. You know they went back and said, you know what Jesus said about you? He said, there's never been anyone born of a woman greater than you to John sitting in prison. Now, this is not, I like putting myself in the stories and I'm imagining Peter. Of course, I always, I give Peter such a bad rap. Hopefully he'll forgive me in eternity. He was really dumb sometimes, but so I'm, and really great other times. But, anyway, but I'm questioning how did Peter or Thomas or any of these disciples respond when John's disciples come questioning whether Jesus is the Messiah? And Peter's probably like, <laughs> You're questioning? How dare you question? Because the reaction, the reason I think Peter's doing that is because the reaction of you and me, isn't it when someone you love, or someone you respect begins to have and vocalize their questions about whether God's real. We feel so ashamed to question and ask because we, because we, feel, we feel, don't, don't you? I, I feel like when someone starts questioning, I feel defensive for God, as if God needs my defense. So we say really dumb things sometimes as Christians to our kids who have questions, to our spouses who have questions, to our friends who have questions, to pastors who have questions. And we feel like we got to defend God as if God needs our defense. The fact is, truth is either truth. And Jesus wasn't done yet. He, he says, there's no one ever been born as great as John. And then he says to Peter, to Thomas, and to everybody else listening. Because Jesus defended, I don't think this is what Peter expected Jesus to do. Like, he, they're like, what are you talking about? He, like, you're saying he's the greatest and he just questioned you? Like, okay, maybe you're letting John get away with it because he's so great. He's so awesome. He's your cousin. He's, 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 he baptized you. I get it. He's, you're letting John get away with that. I can't have questions, though. And Jesus answers that response too. And he says this, yet whoever is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Talking about John the Baptist, meaning John had these questions before Jesus went to the cross and rose again from the dead. John had these questions before the Holy Spirit was released to all of us. And what Jesus is saying is all of us are greater then the man, Jesus said, was the greatest ever born to a woman. Jesus is saying that about you. If you believe in Jesus, he's saying that about you. It's almost like Jesus is inviting us to question. And why not? Because I think that would mean us pressing in closer to him in relationship. Well, look at this. Here's today's takeaway. It's a great quote by Herman Hesse. I read this quote and I was like, oh. He says this, faith and doubt go hand in hand. They are complementaries. One who never doubts will never truly believe. One who never doubts will never truly believe. Imagine just for a moment if we were all open with our questions. Imagine if we allowed others to be open with their questions as well. 
Because God is not afraid. Jesus is not afraid of us questioning him. In fact, I think he's more afraid of our silence. So what if, what if you shouted out to God your anger, your doubt, your fear, and just, are you real? Like, why aren't you doing what I want you to do? Like, what is, is all this true? Because God's not threatened by that. He's not afraid of those questions. He's God. Truth is not threatened by questions. It's truth. What if, what if we became a church who not just tolerated questions, but invited it, allowed it, and processed it without judgment without the pat Sunday school answers. What if, what if we asked the hard questions sometimes? What if, what if? Jeremiah said this, Jeremiah 6, verse 16, he says, go stand at the crossroad. This is Jeremiah the prophet speaking on behalf of God. God said this. Go stand at the crossroads. What's a crossroads? The crossroads is the dividing place. The, 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 the Y in the road. Like this is, this is the dividing place. This is one direction or another. God doesn't say, run away from the crossroads. Run away from that dividing place. Run away from that. He says, go stand there. Go stand there. And look around. And ask questions. Ask for directions to the old road, the tried and true road. Then take it and discover the right route for your souls. God's message isn't to run from the crossroads, but instead to stand at it. And he encouraged us, us to look around and ask questions. And when we find the truth, walk in it. Does this help anyone? Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much, Jesus, for your example. Your response to John's questions, I thank you. You're so merciful and kind and good. Thank you. God, we, we got questions. Be patient with our questions. We thank you that you will. And most of all, Lord, help us to be patient with others, their questions, and their process. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're here today and you don't yet have a relationship with Jesus, maybe because you got questions, Maybe because you're like, I, 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 I don't know. Listen, Jesus doesn't invite you into a relationship once you have all those questions answered. He invites you into relationships before any of the questions are answered. He just says, hey, come, follow me. Come into a relationship. He doesn't invite you into a church or into a religion. He invites you into a personal relationship with Him. He invites you to throw those toughest questions, the toughest ones you might possibly have. He invites you to throw them at Him and says, come. Come and have a relationship. Let's talk. If you want a relationship with Jesus, all you need to do is confess with your mouth that Jesus is God. We're going to do that right now. I lead you all in a prayer. And if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, which makes him God, then right here, right now, you begin a relationship with him. So I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. If you're watching online, repeat it after me wherever you are. Let's pray this together. Dear Jesus, I confess that you are God. And I believe that you rose again from the dead. 
And I ask you now to become my God, my Lord and Savior, and my friend. And thank you for forgiving me of all my wrongs, for accepting me just as I am. I give my heart to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite all of you to close your eyes and bow your heads. If you prayed this prayer for the first time, would you just boldly raise up your hand, give me a wave and say, yeah, Pastor, I prayed this prayer the first time. I want to begin a relationship with Jesus. At the end of the service, we'd love to give you a Bible. It's our free gift to you. It explains what this relationship's all about. It's a way to journey into relationship with him. I look around one more time. Just give me a quick wave. If you prayed this prayer for the first time. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. If you prayed this prayer the first time online, just click I have decided comment that's in the comments below. Just click like on that and our team will reach out to you and we'll send you that Bible as well. Amen. Isn't God good? So good. And now as promised, here's a brand new song. I want you to sink into these lyrics and see if they don't speak to you. Yeah, and we can seek God's face. In the time of grit, he offers us grace.
Would you meet me at the crossroad of my faith? Where my heart is so believing, but my eyes are still not seeing how you work on things. What an awesome message by Pastor Kelly. And we hope you've been enjoying the Songs of Summer series so far. Uh, throw it up actually in the chat there. Tell us what your favorite song so far has been. I believe we're about four, four or five weeks. I can't remember which one we're at. Part four or five. Uh, but there should be five or four songs there, depending on what part we're at. Uh, but throw it up in the chat. Tell us what your favorite song so far has been. Uh, my favorite part in the message there was actually that even those closest to Jesus doubted him sometimes, and yet Jesus was never offended by that. He even went as far uh, as to call John the Baptist the goat, and if you're familiar with sports, that means the greatest of all time. Uh, and I love that about that. I love that, right? So he thinks about us all the time, and he thinks so highly of us, uh, and loves you so much, and I love that. So even when you doubt, Jesus still thinks about you that way. So you can doubt, but faith is important and it needs to go hand in hand with doubt. Uh, and so you can doubt, but make sure you have faith with it. And the best way that you can have faith in God, or one of the best ways, uh, is to have faith with God in your finances. And so you can do that by tithing or giving uh, and just showing God that you have trust and faith in Him no matter what your circumstances are. And so. When you give to My Victory, you actually are helping out organizations like My City Care and Not For Sale, uh, which during this time in the year, My City Care regularly runs a program called Stuff the Bus, where we are able to help out people who are uh, in need during this season uh, for school supplies and making sure that those in need are able to uh, have those school supplies ready for the year uh, and not have to worry about things like that. So your giving goes to, to good causes just like that. So uh, in the comments section there, you'll see a giving link. If you're interested in giving, click on that link. You can give securely. Uh, and yeah, just go through that, that whole process. And thank you so much for that as well. Uh, here at My Victory, we actually have five steps. We've got attend, connect, read, serve, and invite. And I believe, and I think, the most important of those five steps is invite. I know you have people around you that you work around, that you live around. You've been kind of feeling a little bit of a nudge. I, I get it all the time, too. You want to invite them to church, right? It's like, oh, hey, like maybe, maybe I should invite them to church. And that's, I want to encourage you that you should do that. If you have that nudge, go out, invite that person. They need to see uh, what God can do through their life and just, yeah, just blow them away with uh, the amazing love of God. So yeah, if you're feeling that, I want this to be a sign for you. Go out, invite that person. We'd love to see them out as well. With that, guys, thank you so, so much for joining in as well. Actually, sorry, yeah, we have in the comments, we have something for your kids. So if you have kids, uh, you can make sure to click uh, on that or go to family.myvictory.ca. Uh, uh, there's a little bit of a service for your kids that they can join in. Uh, and it's an amazing production put on by them. Uh, and so definitely check that out if you have kids. So, uh, and again, sorry. Thank you guys so much for joining in. Have an amazing week and can't wait to see you next week.